We all know how good method feeder fishing can be for catching loads of fish. Now I'm really lucky to work with Sonu baits and I've realized that bait can give you a real edge when it comes to a technique that's very heavily fished up and down the country. So I'm gonna give you some of my top bait tips for method feeder fishing. In match fishing these days, or in any sort of fishing for that matter, trying to get that little bit of an edge, get that something a little bit different about your bait, I do think it's important. I believe, I'm a big believer that on some venues, the fish are so tuned into the, just the normal fishery pellet, no problem. Just use the fishery pellet, you're gonna catch a load of fish. That tends to be small, very heavily fished venues. When you go to venues that are fished by a mix of anglers, so say pleasure anglers and carp anglers that aren't sort of heavily, just exclusively match fish, like here today at Barston, I think you need that little bit of something on your pellets because a lot of different flavors tend to get chucked into these venues and the fish are on the hunt for them. They're on the hunt for this different sort of pellet. And for me, I've, I've sort of come across different things over the years and this is one I've got a lot of confidence in, a lot of success. I believe that um, there's a couple of aspects to it that make it that bit different. So I'm gonna show you how to do it and it's dead easy, okay? So first of all, I always mix up two types of pellets. Today I've done um, some two mil fin perfects, which are my go-to pellets. When you're, This is when you're not restricted by a fishery pellet. But what I'm gonna show you also works for fishery pellets. But I like to have some two mil fin perfects. These have got a nice sticky, sort of they bind nicely, but they still break down for my method feeder. And I've also done a few two mil S pellets, which are a higher oil pellet, but they're a pellet that don't tend to overly, they're not overly sticky. And I really like that because I can mix a few of these into my mix. I can increase the sort of oil fish meal content within my method mix itself. But also it means I know the mix isn't gonna clag down on the feeder. So all I do is I just take a big handful of the um, two mil pellets, usually two handfuls like that, into a working tub and then I take a handful of the two mil S pellets, all right? So mix the two together like that. I've got something a little bit different there just in the pellets themselves and I've got a pellet that I know works perfectly on the method. Now, I'm a big fan of, of making my baits brighter, of making my baits stand out. And when we did the Scopex bait booster, unlike the other bait boosters, we added a bit of color into it as well. So these actually dye your pellets yellow and the absolutely stink of Scopex, which is a very, very established flavor. I love a sweet flavor on my bait. So all I do is take the bait booster. You can see how much I've been using this particular bottle. It's already halfway down um, and I just, I don't go nuts, all right? Just like a bit of a glug on top of the pellets like that. This is onto my softened pellets. Look, you can see it in there. And then just work it. Work it with your hands, get it all stirred round into the pellets. And what happens is, this is, this is a little bit sticky, but it's not, I'm not gonna say it makes changes the pellets that much, which is good. I don't want it to change the pellets. I've already got the almost, perfect pellets and what you're left with then is look that liquids all the way through the pellets now i tend to do that about half an hour before i start fishing and that is the finished product so here is the pellets that have been left for half an hour and you can see the difference in the color straight away look this is my scopex pellets they're a lot brighter and they smell and taste completely different really strong for me that is a massive advantage when i'm fishing on a method feeder one thing that's become really obvious to me when I'm fishing with a banjo feeder or a method feeder, that style of fishing, is the choice of hook bait is essential. Now, I do like soft hook baits. I, I like an expander or something like that. They're great, work really well. But on a lot of venues, there's lots of small fishing, like small skimmers and roach, and I can't be thinking as my bait come off, I need a harder bait. And that's where a wafter comes in and what makes a wafter so good. Now. I used to love a big wafter. I used to think a 10 mil wafter was great. I could sit there and wait for a big carp to come along and take my bait in. But it's become so obvious that a smaller bait is so more versatile. And not only does it catch at least as many carp, if not potentially more, it catches those F1s that can be two, three pound, and it catches big bream as well. So the six mil plays a massive part. You can see here on the rod, it's the only one that I've got ready because I've caught a lot of fish today 
on the 6 mil. I've actually caught a fish every single cast, be it a big F1, a bream, or three or four carp. So I love having that smaller bait. In fact, it's become so important that just keep an eye out because we're going one step smaller in the, in the near future. So remember that, 6 mil, small baits, small hard baits, perfect for method feeder fishing. When I'm fishing uh, Method Banjo and I'm looking at a bigger water, I like to give myself two places to fish. So first of all, I'm, I'm, I'm not going like maximum distance, but I'm thinking out into the lake. Early doors, I'm probably going out to try and find one in the middle of the lake. Now, it can often work and you can often hammer that line and catch and move about a bit. And you know, the, the usual sort of techniques that we've talked about lots of times, but I always believe you've got to give yourself somewhere where you're going to have some bait and that's where like a loose feed line comes in. In feeder only matches you can't lose feed so you might want to use a feeder but where you can lose feed I think that dropping a method over loose feed 8 mils is, is just an absolute killer tactic and often on bigger venues people ignore the fact that you're going to go uh, you, you're sort of thinking well I can only loose feed up to 20 meters and all the fish are further out than not particularly as it starts to warm up and the days get lighter you're gonna need that line now think carefully about how you use your eight mils think about how you're going to feed them by that i mean the, the amount and when so i tend to look to start feeding these eight mils usually in the latter part of the match okay two hours to go something like that and i might make an impact to start with and film a catapult full of eight mils and just lash in two or three pouch fills make a big noise and say i'm here i'm here lads come and get it all right but also as well as that feeding twos and threes ringing the di dinner bell constantly can also work well i can't tell you what's going to work the best on the venue you go to you've got to figure that out but that's why it's not just a case of emptying a bag of eight mils in a in a tub and and, and lashing them in at 20 meters think about the timing so if you're fishing away and the fishing's good it's clearly good a lot of people are catching get feeding that line earlier get on that line a bit earlier win the fish to your peg if it's a harder day and you're sort of doing all right there's an odd fish being caught use it late on use it in that last hour hour and a half and think about how many is there what you don't want to have is a situation where you've got hundreds of eight mils all on the bottom because it makes it harder to get a bite. Use the noise of eight mils to get the fish there and use the quantity to control how you catch them. It's a great tip. Ground bait is one of the best ways of drawing fish into your peg. It's a nice, fine, smelly particle that really does have an impact into your peg. Now, I've done a lot of method feeder fishing and I've realized that when I fish with ground bait on a method, I just don't seem to catch as many fish as when I'm fishing with pellets or pellets and a little bit of ground bait. I only ever tend to find ground bait good if I'm sort of catching bream. It's a bit weird, really. I, I don't, I'm not sure why when I've done underwater stuff in the past, I've noticed that maybe the fish just waft the ground bait about too much. I'm not really sure, but it's frustrated me because I know how good ground bait is, but I know that I need to use the pellets on the feeder to catch. So... I've got a plan as always. When I've got an elasticated stem like this, I can actually you take my feeder off and make an impact with ground bait in my peg by literally just clipping on a feeder that I can introduce some ground bait with. So I've got the biggest six square rocket feeder here, which is nice and open, okay? It means when it hits the surface, the ground bait's coming straight out. I can just clip that on and I've mixed up a bag of match method mix which is my favorite ground bait for like smell and strength and carp and f1s it's just it's just a brilliant ground bait and all i'm going to do is literally load this feeder nice and loose i'm not going to pack it in hard so look all my ground bait dripping out of it i'm going to bosh that into the peg as it hits the water it's going to be a big smelly attractive cloud of ground bait wind in unclip this feeder put my banjo feeder back on and chuck straight back in over the top so i've made the impact and the attraction of ground bait and then chucked my feeder over the top so i'm getting the best of both it's a really nice tip don't tell anyone i've really learned in my fishing over the last few years how much making an impact in your session can make to your catch you know we've all had those times when we're fishing and 
you get that early run of fish and it's all great but then you just run out of bites or you're waiting too long for bites and you need to make something happen and i've learned that with all types of fishing be it you know changing what you're loose feeding um putting some extra worms in your ground bait whatever that might be now when you're fishing with a like a, a method feeder or a banjo style feeder i think it's really important that you've got something that can make that impact and it's worked brilliantly for me today but there is slight tweaks to what to do now i i think that using like a liquid product like a haze is absolutely brilliant for making that impact what you've got to remember is when it hits the water the water just fills with color around it and it fills with smell around it and it just does that something different to what you've been doing time and time again but i have found that different times you need different sorts of impacts now you can have a look for yourself but there's two that really stand out for me power scope x is the first one and it's a very yellow color so when this hits the water when you when your feeder hits the water you can actually see the water coming off it like a yellow yellowy greeny style color and it's amazing today i've been waiting 10 12 14 minutes for bites and it's been good fishing I honestly have put this on and I've had bites so much quicker. The first one, 90 seconds. Second one, two minutes. Out of nowhere. So it showed that making that impact works. I'm not advocating putting this on every chuck. I'm talking about making an impact, which is why I think that's important. So I use this one when I believe the water is clear or kind of clear, if you like. Okay, so... A lot of commercial fisheries, if you looked in the edge, you can probably see like the first ring of your keep net. You can see up to about a foot down, six inches down. That's when I believe this yellow really comes into it, the power scope X. And for me, that's probably, I would say seven, eight out of 10 fisheries that I'm going to, it's like that. But I'm at Barston here today, and Barston's typical of when we get some rain, or in the middle of summer, it goes absolutely chocolate. I'm talking like you can't even see four inches down. And that's when I need a big impact of smell and a deep, dark color that will be seen. So I'm a big fan of spicy sausage. And this is one from the specimen world that I use a lot. And it's like my little secret, if you like. So on those days when you're thinking like, well, the yellow's not gonna make any difference in this water, that's when you add this sort of bait to your mix okay so i'm going to show you how to apply it today it's the yellow it's the haze power scope x i can see about eight ten inches down so i know that that's the right decision today and like i said it's worked really well it comes out of the bottle nicely don't don't sort of skimp on this absolutely laver it on okay so i put i sort of just squirt it in down the middle nice and thick like that right and then i just use the nozzle to make sure it's all covered a bit more on there I'm not even bothered if a little bit drops off when I cast. Make sure it's completely and utterly covered in the stuff. There you go, look, perfect, just like that. I want loads on there because I'm making an impact. That's what I'm doing. I want it to drip off as I'm casting. I want it to be all over my feeder. I want to make the impact for the fish. I've got to get this out there. Well, I hope you've enjoyed those uh, tips for method fishing. Remember, when you're fishing any sort of style of fishing, keep thinking, keep using all those advantages to try and catch more fish. Everywhere you go is different. There's never any hard and fast rules, but those sort of tips could help you put a lot more fish like that in your net.